talk about is the Oscar Wars that's going on on Twitter between African Americans and pretty much anybody who is black outside of America and immigrants inside of America. I want to talk about this because people I think people are getting over overly emotional about this and people when I talk about in the past about white supremacy the fact that white people control our images because they own music industry movies magazines television And people don't understand that the confusion and the frustrations that are going on now is because white people have played with our images on both sides. They have sent images to Africa. The African-Americans are lazy. um, Whiners and complain, play the victim when the reality is they just don't want to work hard. And they sent the images to us here in Africa that Africans are a bunch of poor people living in huts. You know, the old commercials, you know, you can send a dollar a day, you can feed this little kid. So what you're seeing is those two sides colliding of African-Americans and foreign blacks colliding and people were talking about it like this is a bad thing and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing because they having the conversation I said for so long they haven't been and I think a lot of African Americans didn't feel didn't know that a lot of foreign blacks felt the way that they feel about African Americans and then you watch Africans, though, they seem to be holding on to the boys in the hood joke over the African booty scratcher. They still like hanging on to that. But African-Americans used to call everybody African booty scratchers after that damn film. So I want. And even then, in the film, if you remember, when the little black boy had called the other black kid an African booty scratcher, uh, the little boy who had played um Cuba Gooden Jr. character, he told that boy then, it don't matter what you think, at the end of the day, you from Africa too. Mm-hmm. So, I ain't gonna lie, when I used to hear that term, African booty scratcher, I never looked at it and said... Thought African. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cause you African, you know? Yeah. They so, labeled me as an African American. Yeah. So I just thought it was a... Nah, I didn't know why it was... What the hell is it supposed to mean? I just knew it was stupid. Yeah. But I want people to understand that what you're saying is the effect of Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube that people who could not really talk to each other and express these type of views to each other are now doing so. And because of that, it's going to be a lot of noise and there's going to be a lot of hurt feelings and people are going to be angry. But before, African Americans and foreign blacks can heal, they're going to have to have this fight first. But at the end of the day, both sides should understand who are causing this. They should understand that white people are the reason why you think what you think about Africans and white people are the reason why Africans think what they think about African Americans. They ain't gonna do that. No, they will. They'll get it. They'll get it. I see some smart heads on the internet. Like you said, so. No, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. It just take for 
the cooler heads, the thinking people mm. who know better to get to talking and they talking and I like today I seen a young lady who's African and a black dude talking today and they was um getting on the same page. But it's going to be a lot of noise. And you see that and you see people, man, F A D O S, man. F that. Yeah, like it's going to be that type of stuff. And see, now you got the conservatives who are playing up to the black conservatives. Now they want to try to come home a little bit. And they're a lot of the ones with the um, anti immigration nonsense. Um, so a lot of Africans and Caribbeans and Haitians are hearing that and attaching it to everybody in AUS because of it. And, um, so it, for them to heal, man, they're going to have to have this fight first because a lot of the t- stuff that's going on, people are just now hearing this. They're just now hearing this stuff from the Africans, the Caribbeans, and the Haitians. And so they're going to be riled up and going after them. And and that's the thing that you see, like, with the ADOS crowd, African-Americans. Like, anytime now, they going and everybody mentions and people are taking down their pages and putting their stuff in protective mode and everything because... They're now releasing these thoughts that they think about African-Americans and African-Americans are coming at them and bombing on them on Twitter. And I think the cooler heads have to prevail. And um, it was just crazy. Like some of the stuff that you hear um, was amazing to me. Like it was some Africans and he was saying that, hey, African-Americans are colonizers and imperialists because they live in America. And I said, bro, you and your family moved to America, pay taxes into the United States government that's bombing your homeland. Like, come on, dude. Like, come on, dude. The best and brightest Africans are coming to the States to make a living here and leaving Africa behind. How the hell do you say that African-Americans are imperialists when you come here to join this nation that you say is oppressing Africa and pay taxes to the government that is dropping bombs in Africa? But tell, feel like African Americans are somehow, like, they think, like, when you hear it, you kind of hear, like, people talk about, like, African Americans are not enslaved, was not enslaved here, never dealt with Jim Crow or any of that. And that's why I was listening to this young lady who was um, in Africa, and she was doing a interview with the homie dynasty and I think it's channel called searching for Yuru or something like that and she was telling him that no Africans really don't have a grasp of the African American experience in America so we just don't know much about African American life in the United States and I said no when I listen to the people on the internet I, I see that I see that that they don't And I think because of the celebrity of African-Americans and the stars, I think, and the athletes and stuff, I think they get a wrong impression that, no, like African-Americans over here getting it. But then it doesn't make sense when you hear them talk about African-American being lazy and whiners and playing the victim. So it's like, you know, two sides of these things when you hear people talk about this and it's like, man, this is crazy. And then you see some of the African-Americans talking about Africans living in huts and 
pole and all of this stuff. And they were like, boy, y'all really let these white people get into y'all head, huh? Yeah, like, especially yeah, when like, there's plenty of videos of things from Africa, all the countries that are black countries, and they don't. I don't. I don't get it. That why. Mm. And that why I, I guess that's the reason why I feel like that coming together won't happen because you do like there's so much stuff out there, so much information that you could just Google. Yeah, and the for people for. Specifically, black people, African, all the other people to just come around and say the stuff that they say, and then like it's a lot of stuff out here that you can easily Google. Google, go look up. It's there for you to have, and you saying like it probably be some crazy people who person who would say, "Yo, African people don't have cell phones." No, they have cell phones too. Yeah, but I said they it, have all that. Like you just watch it, and it was like, man, more and more. Like I realize, like. More and more, I realize that black people here in the States, what, when they say they want equality, that shit is not about money. Like, it's not about full-on, like, liberation. Like, what they're talking about is white people not calling them niggas and shit like that because they don't seem to understand what white supremacy is. They think white supremacy is some toothless dude with a red hat on saying, I hate niggas. But the problem is, is that white people have the control of our images. And like I said, with those black exploitation films and um, some of the gritty hip hop, this is what these people think we are because these are the images of us that America been putting out for years. And we don't understand that because we was out there supporting it. Happy to see a black face in a high place, not understanding what that those images was doing to us. As a people, we just out here supporting it. This is why when I did the video on the Telecom Act of 1996, that's why I was telling people in that video, like, hey, what you've seen happen is they overtook our culture. It was no more political rap, no more conscious rap, no more black consciousness. We used to have Queen Latifah, Lauren Hill, and MC Light, and we ended up with Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, and Meg Thee Stallion. Like, this is playing with our images. And this is a stuff like with Africa. Like when you look in the 90s, 2000, the stuff that they would tell you about Africa, about Africans. But this is with the same stuff that they were doing here in the States. Like every time you would see like uh, people who was on food stamp or welfare, they always put a picture of a black person up there. Every single time, even though 45% of the people on food stamp is white. But they was putting a black face on it. And this is how they play with your mind and get you to believe these things. And they was doing this to African-Americans, to the world, and also sending these type of images, bad images out about Africans here in the States. And so black people everywhere have to start understanding what white supremacy really is. And because they have the money and control the books that are sold, the magazines, the movies, the video games, they control your image. They control your image. And that's why they was talking about all of the gay stuff now. They're like, yo, man, is it a gay agenda being put? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. It most definitely agenda pushed. Same thing with the commercials. Like now you see 
I talked about this before, all the commercials on TV with the white husbands and black women. Most definitely pushing it. It's everywhere. Damn near every commercial. All of the movies with black women falling in love with their slave masters and the slave play with the black women twerking for massa while they listening to Rihanna twerk. Twerk, twerk, work, work, work. Like, what the hell? No. It's an agenda. And black people in this country and black people abroad, y'all better start understanding that these people that made you hate your people. They don't want no black unity at all. And we better stop falling for this nonsense. All right, people. Hit that like button and subscribe. 